Good morning. Well, I'm skipping work today. I'm skipping work today. And I'm going to take the whole day and go catfishing. So, I'm going to have to take you guys along with me. We'll call this the epic day of catfishing. So, I got a little break in the weather because it's been 5 million degrees outside lately. And today it's supposed to be a high of 79. So, I'm going to take advantage of that weather. And we'll go do some catfishing. In my line of work, I deal with customer service, and customers are touchy. And uh, your boy needs a break. So, I am going to load everything up this morning, take you guys along for the ride. I realized on my last couple of videos, man, I don't show you like all the behind the scenes, what I have to do to get ready to go fishing. So, I thought, well, hell, let's show you guys. Maybe you like it. Maybe you won't. We'll see. So here is my bait tank. So I put this in last year when I bought this place. It's one of the first things I put in actually. And uh, I freaking love it. So I can do a video on it if you guys want. It's pretty damn simple though. It's got a pump, a pond pump at the bottom. It pulls water up through this Lowe's bucket that's full of lava rock and SOS pads and all kinds of media stuff. Pumps it out the bottom there. And we got a little $70 aerator pump. And I have four giant stones in here pumping oxygen. And then I'll see put some better bait um, in there as well. So let's start with getting some bait. See how good this is. I have no idea how much bait I have in here. At least three. Sunfish guy. That was good. Let's run over that guy. And we got a fray bill. This is a 13 gallon aerator bait tank. Do that. I like this thing a lot, but I gotta tell you, man, these aerators are super noisy and it's super annoying. Put that in there. Alright, quick check. We got that. Bait, bait, oh, some old beer cans, rods, should be good. Let's hook this thing up and let's head out. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Got it. Epic day of catfishing. I have no idea what's gonna happen today, but that's gonna be the title. So, a couple updates for you guys. Won't make this too long winded before I get out there and do some fishing. Is number one, uh, thanks for all your support. I just started getting back on and putting some more videos on, uh, and I appreciate all the support from everybody. Two, I am very sorry I had my comments muted on all my videos. Uh, I didn't realize that. I know why I did it, but I didn't realize I still had it muted. And so now that I have it unmuted, please feel free to comment. And there's a lot of you guys out there that have been watching my videos for three plus years now. You always have awesome stuff to say, very positive, upbeat. 
Uh, and I appreciate that. I just want you to know if you're watching this video, I, I really do appreciate that. Because these videos are not easy to make. I mean, it's easy to go fishing, but it's a whole different animal when you got to video the whole process and try to make it good content so people can actually enjoy watching without getting bored. So I try to do a good job. I put a lot of effort into it and I really try to make it something you enjoy watching. So, thank you. Boom is the boat launch. And hopefully this isn't a sign of things to come today, but I can tell you problem number one is uh, <laughs> when you're in a hurry to go fishing, uh, sometimes you forget to unplug the charger and you decide to drag 500 feet of extension cord down the bypass. So, hopefully as in a sign of things to come today. <laughs> so, <laughs> whoops, I wish I could say that was the first time I've done that, but uh, it's not, so. I know much more in this world that's better than walking up in your boat that's just been launched early morning my favorite part. What a view. Have you guys seen 6500s, which I'm sure a lot of you guys use or have used. Have mixed emotions on those reels. And there you go. Now for those of you guys that see my videos and say, oh my god, you got four rods out. In Michigan, you're only allowed three rods, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I have four rods out, but I'm only fishing with three of them. The reason I have four out is because I have OCD, and I can't have two of one kind and one of another. That's it. That's the only reason I have four sitting out. Now, if one snags up and breaks off, I can rig up the other rod and throw it out real quick while I'm waiting. But it's strictly an OCD thing. For those of you that live with OCD, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Here's my new seats. These are off Amazon. They're called Leaders Accessories Premium Captain's Chair blah blah blah. Anyways, long and short, is I think these are pontoon seats. But what I like is in these tracker boats you don't have a lot of room for the steering wheel to seat. So the fact that this folds up and two, uh, when you're sitting out here, as long as I am during the day, it's nice to have a comfortable seat. It makes a difference. Alright, enough you happen. Let's go fishing. channel kind of show you the rig Abby Garcia 6600 series SX St. Croix Triumph musky rod 7 foot medium heavy power fast action tip size 8 circle hook your preference just make sure it's sharp not less not 40 pound fluorocarbon it's very important you run fluorocarbon here it's abrasion resistant swivel to our main line which is 65 pound braid then we have this swivel slide, slides up and down your line. I like it because it doesn't beat your knot up. And then we run a four ounce weight. Today's current, uh, you could probably get it with a three. We're gonna run a four, we had a lot of rain, uh, but the current isn't really ripping. They don't have the dam that far open. So leader preference is your, is your preference. The words are hard this morning. So you can run a short leader, long leader. I prefer a long leader. Uh, I feel like I have more bites on a long leader, but it's totally up to you and how much junk you're fishing in. And of course, your bait. And that is basically a bluegill. So, everybody has their preference of what you want to live or cut. I prefer cut. So, that's it. I'll turn this part off because it gets gross. I gotta keep the kids safe. Okay. Gross part's done. So. 
I run a head section for sure on one rod. That seems to be your big bait, big fish bait. And the process is really simple. Just put it back in front of a log jam and let the current do the rest of the work. Nothing to it. It's not hard fishing. I think sometimes we make things hard on ourselves. It's really not hard. Water temperature is 78.1 degrees. It's been, like I said, it's been a scorcher last week, three days. So the water temperature being that warm, we had a thunderstorm with the rain up a little bit. Here's gonna be our body section, top half of the body. Um, anyways, with the water temperature being that warm, and we're two days after a full moon, not a lot in our favor. But I do believe that we can find deep water with a little bit of current with some structure, you're going to be in the money. Let's see if I'm right. We got all day to figure it out. It's like I said, epic day of catfishing. Let's see how many we get today. This last section is something new. Like I said, I'm cutting my bluegills different. Instead of cutting into cross sections, I'm cutting into long sessions now. And uh, this section right here is the belly meat, essentially. And this has been a real producer for me. I've caught more fish on the belly meat than any other piece of the bluegill. So hopefully that continues today. I'm not sure why that is, but I always got to respect the water column. Put one out on a deep channel ledge. Also helps you figure out what these catfish are doing. Here we are. Three rides out and we're fishing. Couldn't be happier. Swimming up river pretty quick. Eh, I think he has a lot of size, but it's not dank. Yeah. It's right here. It's a skunk buster. Flathead. Come on over here, buddy. Oh, you hooked in a weird spot. All right. I'll just throw him on the ground. He's hooked in a weird spot, so it's hard to lip him. Rarely I hook him bottom of the lip like that. Doesn't hook that good either. All right. Skunk buster. Little flatty. Nice fish. Not what we're looking for yet, but it's good to get some action. Kind of tells us we're doing the right thing. So let's let him go. Timer's done. All right, let's slide down just a little bit more. Try again. Got a good bit of fish on here. Good rolls. We can drag it. Nobody's business. Big bubbles back there. He's just kind of owning me right now. I'd like to see him swim out deep. He's not doing that. And we're not three minutes into this spot. Look at the 
candy on here. But I tell you what, he's not playing me right. I like to see him run out deep. He's trying to take me up into the shallow. Get away from these log jams. Oh, this is going to be a test right here. As soon as he does, he gets close to the boat. I'm not going to be able to stop him from going up river. Stand down. He's doing the right thing. But he is kind of owning me right now. Let's see what we got to talk about. Let's see what we got here. Does not want to come up. Look at that. Just ripping me. Oh yeah, nice flathead. Really nice flathead. Really nice flathead. We can get him to play up on this side of the boat. And that's what we're after right there. Let's see if we can get the net. Right. We're halfway home. Really nice flathead. This one took belly section again. Oh, yeah. He's a 20. He's a 20 all day long. He might be bigger. Oh, that's a really big flathead. That is legit. Let's see if we can get him in here. Not done yet. This one might be another 30. That's what we do here. Oh, we got him. We got him. Yeah, buddy. Spinning around here so you guys can see. We just landed another giant. Another giant flight. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger than I think it is. Yep. That's a big one. That is a big one. That'll work. See it? That will work. All right. Let's get the hook out of them. Get a weight. Get a measurement. Let's see what we got here. Hooked well. really well actually but not deep belly meat suction again does it again this is third huge flathead of belly meat section look at this thing guys look at this thing this is legit that's a legit giant Fat flathead. This one might have a little more weight on it than I think. I mean, he feels feels like he's 30. You know, I'm terrible at these weights. Every time I talk about it, I say, oh, it's a 50 pounder. It ends up being like 18 pounds, but this one's legit. All right, let's set him down for a second. Get a view of him. And let's, uh, Let's get this stuff kind of settled in here. Get some measurements, get some weights. Get them back in the water. That's what we're after. It's been a good year for me for uh, big flatheads. These last couple weeks, I've got several nice ones. All right, we got our new scale. Zeroed. See it zeroed. All right. Let's clamp on and see what he weighs. Ouch. All right. He is. As you see, it's 24.6 pounds. So, not my biggest of the year, but a pretty respectable flathead. Let's see what his length is. Uh, he is 37. 37 inches. You guys can see that girth. 
just a, it's a fatty. Big old fatty. Oh, there you go. Pretty nice fish. Yep. All right. Missing an eye. Caught before. What are you thinking? There you go. Yeah. Now, before I make a big move, I want to kind of show you guys something I saw while I was coming up this <coughs> bank. I've been working this bank and uh, pulled a few nice fish off of it. But I noticed something. If you look on the graph here, well, you can see it, but very smooth bottom right just nice mud smooth bottom see the hard red it's super soft mud bottom but then i noticed as i'm going along here up around this uh, i guess you would call it the inside of a chicane turn kind of an s turn in the river is that as i creep up here a little further i start to notice a lot more structure out in the middle of this river and uh it's quite it's pretty good structure so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up find the structure again I'm gonna come out from the bank a little bit because I do think this warm temperature is moving the fish out a little bit and uh, I'm gonna see drop some baits on this deeper water structure and um, you know part of catfishing is just figuring out what's not working a lot of times people think you just go out and work on what's working but really it's about eliminating water it's pretty similar to deer hunting. It's about eliminating spots. So you see our first little piece of structure out here. We'll just move right along here and see if we can see this again. But there was quite a bit of structure out here deep. You see what I'm talking about here. You see how, I mean, it's subtle. You see how it's really smooth and then we got these little humps here, right? So that could be rocks. I highly doubt it's rocks because we don't have a hard return, but it's red, so more than likely that's wood or submerged lumber. Uh, but it could also be fish. I mean, those could be non-scaled fish glued to the bottom. So, um, and then obviously there's the channel drop off. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of position myself so I'm dropping the baits all along this right here, uh, and just scoot up a little bit here, and. Um, basically what i'm trying to tell you is and i don't know if this will work so um but sometimes it's it's the biggest fish you pull off of a river catfish flathead whatever is never the structure you see because you got to remember every fisherman that's coming out here is looking for down lumber he's looking for that water that's pouring in from the bank on a creek inlet uh, that's what every fisherman is throwing their bait at so you got to be a little smarter than that and you have to look for that that structure that nobody is really looking for. Uh, and you can do that with your electronics. So we found these little bit of humps back here, right? And we're going to set up right on top of those, just drop our baits down in there and see what happens. So again, I mean, look at this spot. There's really not a whole lot of structure on the bank here. I mean, one little log coming out here, which a lot of people would set right in front. In fact, I think one of my first spots when I got here was dropping baits right in front of that but when you look at the graph there's underwater structure right here on outside this bend so let's drop their baits in there hopefully it's not too snaggy doesn't appear to be and let's just put our baits right on that structure and it feels fairly hard so that may be rocks but the return is wrong on the graph because rocks have a Really strong return, yellow, strong, hard return. So let's just put our baits out here in this and uh, let's have a little experiment, see if this works. Well, kids, the day just got funner. 
Uh, we are out of gas. We have a long ways to go upriver against the current to get back to the boat launch. So when I say I was fishing out here all day, I, I meant by choice. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's ought to be interesting. Hopefully the trolling motor gets us back. Meanwhile, let's soak some baits and see if we can get another flathead. All right. I guess since we're stuck in a river, because we'll make the best of it. Let's see what we got for breakfast here. Not a new Baja Blast. Don't mind if I do. And melted apple fritters. Clyde's. It's his signature donuts. But it tastes great warm. <laughs> We're gonna test that out. Mm -hmm. I agree, Clyde. They're pretty good warm. Yeah, it's doing the right thing. Swimming out deep. Took it down, right? How big it is. He's taking some drag. He's taking some drag. It's not acting huge. We got a channel? Oh man, a pretty nice channel too. We're due for a good channel. We were due for a good channel, kid. It is. Do what he wants here. Probably gonna need the mat. Probably lift these guys. I'm gonna tear your hand up. Oh, wow. That's not a bad little channel. 10 pounder. Well, you didn't take long. We were in the water five minutes. If that, this fish just took it down. That's a terrible net job. There we got him. There we got him. Cool. Making the most of a bad situation here. We uh, decided to drag the power cord down the, the bypass this morning because we didn't unplug the boat from the garage. And then we didn't check our gas gauge and we ran out of gas. So now we're troller motoring our way back up current and stopping in a few spots along the way and got lucky here. Got lucky. All right, buddy. Let's get you unhooked. Belly meat section again. Almost every fish. section. Let's get a weight on this guy. Let's see how good I am. I'm going to say he's 10. But now that I'm picking him up, he feels a lot lighter. So let's see what this is. And we are uh, nine, 9 pounds, 1 ounce. We'll take it. Let's get a measurement on it. Just thinking to myself, it's been a while since I've hooked up with a nice channel cat. And uh, not that I don't mind catching channel cats, it's just I'm really looking for the big flathead. But I'll tell you, um, nothing beats a fight of a good 10 plus pound channel cat. Those things go ballistic, especially in this warm water, 79 degree water temperature. So, might be onto something. We'll bounce down this little shore here and Hit these log jams, see if we can pull a couple more out. Well, it's 
wasn't the kind of epic day of catfishing I was expecting. But we did get a couple of fish out of it, so we were down to 1.45 miles per hour. And uh, I'm about, I'd say a mile into this troll, headed back to the boat launch. So hey, this is fishing. Sometimes you do stupid stuff like forget to put gas in your boat. But luckily I remembered to charge the batteries so at least I can troll my way back to the dock. So that'll do it for me. I'll head back in, get some gas, get some rest, and uh, see if I can head back out. Ooh, they need some batteries soon. Well, since I last talked to you, I've taken a nap, first and foremost. Done some repairs. I'll show you what we got going on here. First and foremost, we fixed our broken extension cord. Luckily, the other half is still stuck to my pole barn. <laughs> so we got that fixed up. And before we go out, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this, unlike this morning. We got the batteries charged up since we decided to kill them, trolling motoring a mile back. We put $125 in gas in this bad boy, so hopefully we don't run out of gas anytime soon. And we need to load up with some bait. I think we're going to do some live bait tonight. Let's see how it looks. So, back to the bait tank here. A couple guys kind of hanging out on the surface there. Some first, and get some water. Hands. Smelling the rape in there. Smelling the Right. Got a little nets key. All right. First scoop. And we got one. Yeah. Hopefully we get more on the next one. Yeah, well done. Probably overkill, but better have enough bait and not enough, right? All right. Let's see what's stinking. Yeah. Left my cut bait in there for this morning. That's smelling real nice. Got my legs to keep this up. Make it bubbles. Make it bubbles. We'll make it bubbles. Right. We'll turn our light off. <coughs> Load up. We'll do some evening fishing. Oops. Oh sweet, Mr. Wakeboard's back. That's exciting. And my boat's floating away. Also exciting. Oh, start the trip out like we ended the last trip. start off with I'm gonna work this bank right here hit these few structures that's uh probably four or five spots so that's a good hour hour and a half of fishing so we'll start up here at this first little jam and then we'll just kind of bounce our way down it 
or bound our way down, as Steve Douglas would say. So let's go up here to the top of this and uh, see what happens. Water depth is good. We're at almost 80 degrees water temperature, 10 feet deep. Uh, see what happens. All right, just like that, we're back out fishing again. We're set up on our first spot. Set the timer for 15 minutes. Uh, we're working, what am I, inside bend. So I'm just on the inside bend off of an outside corner, so you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But the long and short is the current is running out that way, and I'm on the slack water side of it. So it's uh, fairly deep here for being inside bend. It's almost 10 foot, and uh, we're just working on a little bit of structure down here. Um, trying to stay out of the snags a little bit. It's a little snaggy in here, so I'm just trying to set the baits in front of the structure and let the scent go down in it. Typical we'll setup. So we'll give it 15 minutes, see if we get a nib. If not, we'll move down to the next one. That is a fish. Maybe it's with a log. This fish is owning it. Oh man, this is where I don't like the back anchor rope. what we got here but it feels really big do what we do feel like I don't know I feel I think he just realized he's hooked wow this thing is just like you can't even move it Can you move this fish? I wish I didn't have that back anchor down now. In fact, this fish is so big, I'm putting this back anchor up. Wow. Wow, look at that. Just going wherever it wants. I don't know what I got here, but it's big. Hey, look at that, it's just peel and drag. Can't even stop them. Can't even stop them. So we can just wear them out. I don't know what else to do. It's on a headpiece. Yeah, that's a big fish. This is a really big fish. Really big fish. Let's keep them buttoned. So we got here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That might be a 40. That might be a 40. Another big giant flathead. This thing's really big. This thing is really big. This thing's legit. Got him. We got him. We got him. next level this one's definitely next level this is a very heavy heavy planet wow see that wow well sometimes you run out of gas you rip the power cord out of your house and you persevere and this is what you get. Fishing gods shine down on me today. This is a, this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is my biggest flathead ever. I haven't even weighed him yet. I'm telling you, biggest flathead ever. Oh, look at how he's hooked. Look how he's hooked. I mean, this fish was buttoned. Oh, I got no one. 
Ждем. scale Point one pounds. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. Fly hit number two of the day over 30 pounds. I guess we could call it an epic day. See, so it just laid all its eggs too. Just off, off the nest. Or female. Female's not on the nest, but she just laid all her eggs too. She probably went at 40 and she had all her eggs. Oh, sweet. This guy's back. That's awesome. Like I said, we have a wakeboard bite. Watch that. Watch that log. Watch that log. Right. Let's get a measurement on this fish. So she measures, we get a couple pictures, and we'll get her back in the water. This is 40. Just a touch over 40. Holy oh, shit. There you go. That. Just a touch over 40. Another bohemoth. Get some pictures and we'll let her go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good fight. Feel her biting down on me. There she goes. That was awesome. Heck yeah. All right. Let's get re rigged and get back out there so we can get another one. Kind of show you guys something here. So, you see this log jam right up here? That is literally the last spot I was fishing. We're not 20 yards from the next spot. That's why I say you gotta work each one of these structures all the way down. Here we are with three lines up here, 20 yards away. We hook up with a 30 pounder and then we lost another one all within five minutes. So nothing for 15 minutes, five minutes, two fish. You gotta work each one of these spots down this river. You can't just bounce down bank to bank. Put the time in, it'll happen. Another headpiece. Doesn't feel huge. It's fish. It's third fish in a spot. Took a little drag. Took a little drag. Take it. Little, little guy.
All right, buddy. Thanks for the fight. This one on live bluegill. This is pretty hefty. Feels decent. This was a big bluegill. Let's see what took it down. I don't think it's monstrous, but who knows? No, it's not very big. Not very big. Took a big old bluegill down there. I want you guys, see if I can get this in with the bait. I want you to see the size of this bluegill this little catfish took. Look at this. I want you to see the size of this bluegill. This catfish took down. Still alive. So that's the size of the bluegill. And that's the size of the flathead. So, you know, these fish will eat anything. They don't care. Let's let them go. This one back. So you're watching YouTube videos. Well, Rod just bought one in the water. He just absolutely doubled over. Fish ain't even that big. Man, he pummeled it. Just pummeled it. Just pummeled it. <laughs> this fish ain't five pounds and he just smoked it. Let me get our bait back. Well, that's cool. Sweet. Well, once I catch another fish, I think that'll do it for uh, my epic day of catfishing. So, it was a good day. We caught a lot of fish, had a lot of fun, had a lot of mishaps, uh, but all in all, good day. So, once I hook up another one, I'm gonna sign out. Thanks for watching.